Now broadside array is the simplest antenna array which has uniform spacing and no phase difference between the elements. Now what happens is whenever we make an antenna array there are two things that we need to take care of. The first thing is the spacing between the elements. Now this spacing needs to be uniform in case of broadside array. Now if we are specifying the distance between the elements in terms of the wavelength to be used then the most common uh, spacing between the elements is lambda by 2 however you can keep it uh, at an any multiple of lambda and the next thing is uh, the power that we connect to these sources for example if all the sources are connected to the same power uh, that will be an example of a broadside array so every element is being fed with the same power and with no phase difference at all so because if you study the next antenna array type which is end fire array it has a uniform progressive phase shift between the elements so we'll discuss that later but for the time being broadside array being the simplest of the antenna arrays has uniform spacing and same power connected to all the elements now to understand a broadside array what we do is we take two elements they are separated by a distance of lambda by two and we try to calculate electric field intensity E at a point P which is pretty far off from these two elements. Now it is understandable that the electric field intensity at E because of the presence of these two elements 1 and 2 is going to be E1 plus E2 now there is going to be some phase difference because the distance traveled by uh, the electric field from 1 and 2 are going to be different as you can see 1 is traveling more distance as compared to 2 to get its energy delivered to point P so it will have uh, a few more wavelengths taken and that could result in some phase difference <clears throat> now to cut short and to understand this lecture better what we do is i'll just give you an example that the normalized electric field intensity E received at a point P because of two sources becomes a function of the angle at which the point P is located for example if we take this point P here the energy received will be different if we take the point P here it will be different if we take the point P here it will be different so the crux, the crux of the matter is that the normalized electric field intensity received at the point P becomes a function of theta which as a matter of fact is a solid angle but for for the sake of simplicity we, we are just considering at considering that to be a planar angle now once we know that the electric field intensity is a function of theta we'll need to find uh, theta max 
and theta min. Now theta max will give us the angle of maximum energy distribution and theta min will give us the angle of minimum energy distribution and similarly we'll, we can find theta half power point distribution which is again an important um, angle to be calculated now to calculate theta max we know that uh, cos of pi by 2 cos of theta max should have a value of plus minus 1 so that will give theta max if you calculate to be equivalent to 90 and 270 and in order to calculate theta min we'll need to put the value of e to be equivalent to 0 so that will give me theta min to be equivalent to 0 and 180 degrees and similarly you can calculate cos of pi by 2 cos theta hppd you can put it as half uh, of power should be equivalent to 1 by under root 2 of e because e is proportional to under root p so that will give us theta hppd at 60 and 120 degrees now if we plot the radiation pattern of a two element broadside array what will happen is we know that the angle of maximum energy distribution is 90 so maximum energy is being sent here at 90 and 270 which is uh, perpendicular to the placement of the two elements and as we move away as we move as we move away from 90 the power is going to decrease because we know that at 0 and 180 degrees the power is minimum or these are known as nulls so we'll will now plot major lobes so I'll draw 60 degrees angle and 120 degree angle and I'll pass my main lobe through this these points now you can see the power at 60 degree is going to be equivalent to half of the power which we receive at 90 degrees so as we move away from 90 degrees the power reduces and as we reach 0 degrees it becomes 0 and this angle is known as HPPD half power point distributions give us uh, half power beam width all right similarly on 270 degrees we can draw a similar looking major lobe now once we know what HPBW is we can further proceed on to calculate first null beam width which is another parameter half power beam width is the beam width of the angles where the power is greater than or equal to at least half of the power which is received at point P 
which is the point of maximum power reception and if we draw tangents to this major lobe the angle that we get this huge angle which is obtained by drawing the tangents to this major lobe is known as first null beam width basically uh, our first null the point at which the power transmitted becomes zero is the will result in creating of first null beam width and usually the first null beam width is almost equivalent to twice of h p b w and that is how we draw the uh, fundamental radiation pattern of broadside array so essentially what happens is we we start the study of broadside array with two elements and we try to calculate the power received at a distant point p because of those two elements and they give us this normalized formula which is a function of theta or the angle at which point p is located and from there we find the point of maximum reception the point of minimum reception and point where half power is received and thus we draw a three-dimensional figure of radiation pattern and that's about it and thank you so much for watching this video have a good day and a good life bye